Hello and welcome to Mumbling with Matt, a special game of the year episode, game of the year of 20, no, it's, okay, you're watching this video in 2020, but me and, and, and my good friend Liam's, hello, we are talking about our games of the year of, of 2020. I said 2020. I meant 2021. This, you gotta, it, you gotta mm. restart this whole, this is a disaster. We literally, you literally so. told me, you warned me. It's a be, complete be clear disaster. About this. <laughs> but that's, but that, you know what, when that a complete disaster has to happen, you have to grab the disaster and use it, you know? Yeah. Whatever that means, that's why you're here. Yeah, Welcome. I did a video on Disaster Day of Crisis, so I'm just remembering what the guy says. When God gives you a disaster, you have to ride it! I have to play that one year. That uh, would be my game of the year of 12 every year, if well, it could be. wrap it up then. We got our answers. <laughs> if you were just here for Matt's game of the year every year, it's disaster, and you're good. Um, uh, Liam is, is very kindly taking his time for us to use the power of the internet to talk through it. Mm -hmm. So he and I can discuss our various uh, games of the year. I wanted to do something different uh, for for this particular year um, because, you know what, doing it like online sort of in this way in, in a sort of podcast format, it, you know, exemplifies 2020 to a T, unfortunately. So, yeah, no, it's the uh, the backup strat of the backup strat and hopefully yeah. something good will come out of it. So. We each have a list, since, since one numbered list is too boring, we each <laughs> have a numbered list of 10, and we are going to be alternating through our numbered list of 10 games from 2020 that, uh, that we liked. That is two times the games. That is two times the value. Most That's 856 mega power. Any other top 10 list only has 10 games on it. <laughs> And sometimes not even that. Charlatan Maximilian Dude only has five. You know, that's bold, though. I appreciate that. Everyone goes for ten. It's it's exciting that he can say, you know what? Good enough here. <laughs> Nothing else below this. I didn't like Ghost of Tsushima that much. I didn't play bold. Hades, etc. So... <laughs> so I believe I will uh, start off. Um, uh, so my number ten is a controversial one. Uh, it is Fast and the Furious Crossroads. Nice. Now, Liam, I know you could probably uh, really, really resonate with this. You know when you believe in something and you believe that you're so right mm -hmm. and that no one can change your mind? Mm -hmm. This is one of those times. Now, some people might say that, yes, mathematically, is Fast and the Furious Crossroads labeled one of the worst games of 2020? Mathematically? Maybe in so. Its, <laughs> in terms of its aggregate review score? Yes. Technically, you could say that it is. But... Um, when, when this came out, and it got delayed, this was originally supposed to come out in May of 2020 when Fast and the Furious uh, Cross John Cena was supposed to also come out in mm -hmm. May. Uh, but when that got delayed, the game got delayed, but not by a whole lot, by like a few months, and they still put it out anyway. And I was always, I was looking forward to this as it was about to release, um, just because I was like, oh yeah, more Fast and the Furious. Oh yeah, Vin Diesel's on the box. He, and, and he's on the box and doesn't look very good either. He looks worse than he does in The Wheelman or even Chronicles of Riddick, which is amazing. He actually did voiceover in this game, right? It's not a sound -like. I believe there's a big old Tygon Studios logo nice. right at the start of this game. So you know that he had a lot to do with it. But um, I played through this. Um, I still have another part I, I've been meaning to upload. I've gotten around to it. I, I finished the game it is it is just a really fun cheesy game that you don't see that often like you know th this would have been in the heyday of the sixth generation or into the seventh where you'd see these movie licensed games but this one does it goes a step further by having uh actual writers that had penned fast and the furious movies before like this is one of those extensions when they're like oh we can because all the Fast and the Furious games up to this point, like Fast and the Furious Showdown, which I believe Namco published, 
were like had nothing a lot to do mm-hmm. with the franchise there but this really really felt like playing one of the movies it was authentic and like it, it it really did like we we you know you and i both enjoy these movies lots of people do and if you're if anyone's just thinking oh it's you know just uh like a really bland generic racing game with you know whatever thrown in it's like no it actually really does feel like there's lots of cut scenes and they feel authentic mm-hmm. to the if, the movie premises if you're thinking that you're actually thinking of forza that's actually what God, you mean. It, it, it is, especially that Forza, <laughs> the Forza uh, Fast, Fast and, and the Furious, Furious DLC. Yeah, that that they was the, the last, uh, the last Fast and Furious game I played. It was a standalone Te- game, and it was free. And too. technically, technically, it was the last one before this. But um, I, what I was surprised with this game specifically is that like every mission you actually do is is pretty varied. You're never really doing the same thing. Uh, twice there is an actual street race complete with bouncing asses at the start of uh, the cutscene leading up to that race like it has a lot to actually offer in its story and its story is only like three or four hours long but there is not anything that feels like you're that gets very repetitive which which Mm -hmm. i liked you're constantly switching drivers their cars do different things um and generally the game is like easy to kind of play through um one problem with it, though, is that on launch, and um, assuredly right now, it has the one of the deadest multiplayers you could possibly find. Really? Um, sh- yeah. Shocking news. Fresh out I mean, of Matt's mouth. <laughs> I... I, I I'm, I actually was shocked. Like at launch, and a lot of people were like, "Well, I did get to play some multiplayer, and it's really basic stuff." Like mm-hmm. I don't know exactly what it was because I was never able to get a game going, but that's obviously a problem, and that's that's what actually holds this game back from it being even higher. Like in terms of a junkie, like you know, silly game, is that it was a full price game at launch. Mm-hmm. It's campaign is like four hours max, and its multiplayer was just not like a factor so that's kind of like a big knock against it if they had maybe priced this as $40 it'd be an easier recommend like everyone just go buy it but anytime anyone's like I really like Fast and Furious should I get this I'm like "Ah, don't get a full full price because you might you know this is part of like I made a video for my channel so that's fine Mm -hmm. but for someone that's not doing that I can in good faith recommend someone buy it if you see it for really cheap though um, I'd absolutely say it's worth it specifically cause I'm not, I'm not going to give it away, but they get really close to space. <laughs> they don't go to space, but they get but, close. But like the and precipice of space. If they, 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 they're scraping the ceiling of space. Ooh, just a little further and they would have went right off the flat planet. They just into space. <laughs> They just need to burst through the ice wall. Yeah. And they would have gotten there. Damn. And that's and that's why it's my number 10. That's cool. This will remain uh, a dusty memory uh, on uh, alongside like Spy Hunter on the GameCube and 007 mm. Nightfire. I could Very see this good. on the same shelf with those and be I, it, it is. It is. It is of that ilk. Uh okay. Well, I will jump right into my number 10 then. Uh, starting off with a solid one, Ghosts of Tsushima. Um, Ooh, number 10. Number 10. Number 10. Ghosts of Tsushima, <laughs> the game trailer's voice. <laughs> Video uh, arcade, top 10. Ghost of Tsushima, a game that is not higher uh, because most of the time it is simply not, like, excellent. It's really consistently good the whole way through the game. Uh, mm. It seldom really excels and has me at the edge of my seat and thrilled. Uh, some of the story missions are really wonderful, and the story has a uh, an emotional core that really reveals itself towards the end and, uh, to me, manages to land in the finale. Uh, okay. I don't want to get spoilery for this one, uh, but one of the endings was like very, very teary-eyed, Liam. I was very touched by... Uh, by what happened in that one. Sorry, one of the endings? Is Ooh. there multiple? Oh, how mysterious. You'll have to you'll have to play it and find out. I did not actually know that. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's not a, not a huge difference, but uh, think, right. think Mass Effect 3. Uh, right. <laughs> but but one of them really hit, and I was like, oh, damn. Uh, a lot of people liken this game to Assassin's Creed. I don't think that's totally incorrect. Uh, there's a bit more of a focus on, like, 
clearing camps like you would in, say, a Far Cry or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're, you're getting a sort of, you know, Western open world experience. If you've played any of them, you, you sort of know what you're getting into. It doesn't really break the mold too much. And I think that's like kind of one of its faults. Uh, probably the biggest highlight is the awesome melee combat system. Uh, right. It's, it's it's just really good. It's a really good combat system. Uh, you I know, did hear that from a few people when it was released. Just like, yeah, this is, you know, uh, a, an open world action adventure game. And it, yeah, it's not excellent in any other area, but it's not, you know, particularly weak in any area either. And like that holds true for you, right? Is what you're saying? Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's no area where it's really weak, honestly. Uh, probably the only area where I'd say it's like really excellent is the art. The art really rises above mm -hmm. uh, the sound design as well. Uh, all the user interface and user experience is really good. Uh, stuff like using the wind to guide you to objectives instead of having a bunch of map markers all over your screen is nice. Um, That's kind of what made me go like, oh, I need to buy this. And I bought it, but I just I just never could get around to actually playing it. I played a little bit on my PS5 like the first 10 minutes, but, but I haven't been able to... Uh, clear my schedule enough to go for it. But when I saw that wind mechanic, I was like, oh, that's cool. It's so nice. Uh, you'll, you'll dig it when you get around to it. Uh, all the main missions that like cap off chapters are super bombastic and very fun to play. Uh, the prologue mission is also really, really cool. They're big highlights. Uh, a lot of the side content in the middle, eh, I could take it or leave it, honestly. Mm. Uh, I, I, play, I did play for over 60 hours, all said. Uh, including the multiplayer, because your, your save data does have uh, a timer attached to it. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure all the side content was worth doing, honestly. Uh, the main story was great. Some of the side missions are winners, but eh. um, one One little complaint I had was there are these um, hillside temples that you find. I forget right. the exact nomenclature for them. Yeah, um, I know of them. And basically, you walk up to a temple, and almost always the stairs are broken, and you need to find a way to get to a top to the top uh, with the stairs broken out. So you end up climbing around the mountain. Um, I think this is a really cool and fun idea. Uh, nothing we haven't seen before, but unfortunately, I think the the level design for those uh, stage those um, scenarios is really limited. You're almost always just following a line up the mountain and it's it's not actually very mm. thrilling to do. Uh, so th those missions I, I particularly didn't like. The art was nice, but eh. Um, uh, would be remiss to not mention the excellent multiplayer mode that they added on a few months later. Uh, I've heard, I've heard. October. It's so good. I, I've played quite a lot of it. Uh, I just haven't done the uh, co-op raid that you really need a party for apparently. Um, really excellent uh, sort of micro loot game. Sort of like if you if you take your 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 Destiny or your uh, I don't know uh, the Avengers or whatever online game people is pop uh, is popular these days. Well, I guess not Avengers, but a popular <laughs> one. Uh, it's sort of like that. It's 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 a loot action game, not a shooter, but you know loot action game, and it's just a, a micro version of that. Uh, you get to when progress. I first you can Sorry, progress to the max say, level in like under 10 hours. Um, right. You just get a really shrunk down version of that. And it is a good thing. It's it's really, really good. Because when I first heard that multiplayer mode, I was like, oh, that how is that going to work? Like, you know, it, it doesn't happen that often. Like open world action game. Mm -hmm. Assassin's Creed has kind of dabbled into it like every so often, but it stopped after a while. So when I heard, I was like, ah, I, don't, I don't know. But then like when I watched like a lot of videos, I, I watched Max play and I, I read up about it. I was like, wow, this is actually way cooler than I ever thought it could be. It, it's startlingly good. And I think one of the things that, that, has impressed a lot of people with it as well, is the net code is super good. Uh, ah. I, I don't ever... I, I feel like my combat skills from the single player transferred over one-to-one, -one, and I cannot feel any appreciable latency uh, preventing my perfect parries from coming out <laughs> just as I expect them. So, cool. Uh, really, really good game. Even though it's at number 10, uh, do not be fooled. That is really good, and there are a lot of games that did not make the cut. So, yeah. Also, if you're playing it on a, a PS5, by the way, Matt, uh, turn those settings up to max, because holy shit, it's gorgeous and runs yep. at 60 FPS. 
No, uh, I, I, I did. That was that's kind of what I was waiting for. So once I got my PS5, I just transferred the game over, and I was like, okay, mm-hmm. well, if I'm if I already bought this because I had bought it on PS4 and just like let it sit until mm-hmm. I got my PS5, and yeah, no, I was I was actually really pleasantly surprised by the graphics. Like even you know you're playing on a big next gen machine, but I was just like, wow, this this still looks really good. So yeah, no, it totally holds up. So yeah. Anyway, I'll I'll throw it back over to you. All right, so my number nine is a game. I'm not sure if you've heard of it, Liam, but um, it is Proteus. Oh, and yeah, okay, it, okay. It's a it's what um you know lots of people call a boomer shooter. <laughs> yeah. Which, uh, if a term, if some of you out there don't know, it means a shooter that is liked by an old person such as me. <laughs> Traditionally, a '90s style FPS, and and Proteus is very much that. Um, you are a guy, you have gun, and you shoot. Mm-hmm. Um. It's it's a really grungy FPS, which is kind of what um, uh, really sort of uh, not not shocked me, but kind of like okay, every, n- no one's doing it exactly like this. Like there's Dusk, which you know does its own thing. Mm-hmm. Um, there's uh, Project Warlock, which also does its own thing. But like Proteus is like something. It, it just has this really like if I could say it's like a FPS channeled through a, a Genesis. I, I would say that it is because its art style is just like it's it's very pixelated, but in a good way. Um, and there's even an you, option to take you're right, off it's these super weird. Looking. Yeah, there's this really interesting aesthetic on the enemies where they look really pixelated, but done in such a way. And when you, tr- you that's an option you can turn off and make the enemies just like regular polygons and they look terrible by comparison. You're just like, <laughs> no, um, I'm not, I'm not really into this, but um, it's incredibly violent blood, blood soaked from beginning to end. And it doesn't really do much else aside from that. Um, there's a couple of wrinkles though, and some of those wrinkles are kind of lifted from like Doom 2016, which isn't surprising because it's made by developers that worked at at id Software on Doom mm. 2016. This was uh, this was a Kickstarter game, and um, it's one of those Kickstarter games where they took their time, they did delay it. Um, and it's much better for it because the game is incredibly polished. The feel of, of, and it's cause it's very fast paced as well, uh, much like doom. So, um, the only real wrinkle to it is that every gun has a very distinct, uh, alt fire mode. Um, and they do very different things. Like your machine gun will light people on fire, which causes damage over time. And there's a lot of weapons, uh, going on. Um, and, there was a couple of other boomer shooter kickstarters um, over the course of 2020. One of them was Hellbound, which I did not personally like. They're they're going for the same thing, but um, Proteus is just well well beyond that, and like in in every kind of metric, um, just just a lot more satisfying to play. Um, and the other two things I want to talk about that 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 do kind of set it apart is that like i think proteus might have the best 3d map i've ever seen like ever seen oh, where like metroid prime style 3d map. it is kind of it is it is it takes the base of metroid prime but just makes it way better like it it, it sort of puts a texture over that 3d map and has color coded sections and it's just it when you press the like the map button it kind of zooms in to your view so it's a very slick transition um you you do need to constantly refer to this map because the levels are very multi-tiered um and but they're not too multi-tiered where you feel lost it just it has that really nice balance of okay I'm kind of put into this little playground but the playground is kind of you know, goes in one direction. So it, it was very easy to navigate these levels with, with this map, but it's just because it's, it's so well done. Right. Um, and this game also heavily features a map editor, um, at, built from the ground up for the game. Like it wasn't just a thing they added on. This was always intended to be, um, part of the main game. Um, and it's good that that's there because the, the actual campaign is is like again three or four hours long but there's already endless maps that you can try for free 
from other users. So that's the you know no an absolute um, uh, treasure chest of content if you look into the community and see what they've cooked up. And there's right now there's no multiplayer in it. That is an update that they said they wanted to do later. Uh, I believe in 2021. So I'm assuming that's coming. But I I had a blast with this thing. Um, in general, just just really satisfying gunplay and just feels really good. Um, the only negative I'd say is that generally you are fighting through really similar environments. Mm. Um, it's mostly rocks, lava, and industrial like space spaces. Um, you you kind of see that being cycled in and out uh, for all the the levels of the campaign. Um, so you don't really see anything outside that tile set. Um, and I don't know if that's something they're going to be adding in to like put more like base levels in the campaign or give more tile sets and textures for the map creator, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. And the game doesn't really have any boss fights, which is kind of like a little disappointing overall. There's, there's lots of fun enemies to fight and it's mostly like wave based when they, when they filter into an, uh, a certain part of the map and they're still all fun to fight and there's some good designs, but it just kind of made, there's not even like a final boss, which was kind of the real main thing. Like I can kind of get not having FPS bosses cause they didn't happen. Like original doom didn't really have like bosses at the end of every stage or no, not at all. Every, yeah. every zone, but they had a final boss. So the fact that that's on there is a little bit of a letdown. But I mean, it's minor because the game is is super fun to play. I think it's only on Steam now, but they did say they wanted to do console ports, and I believe a Switch port. Like this is the type of game where I'm like, oh, I, I'll I'll rebuy that on the Switch, no problem. Like because mm. it's very pick up and play. So yeah proteus um just just one of those great kickstarter uh success stories because i think right now on steam the game has like overwhelmingly positive reviews oh, good so for them. um yeah yeah i'm big big fan like this and dusk um that i also had in my uh top 10 of like a year two years ago um so uh you know as as a person that loves these types of fps's i'm i'm really happy that the with uh, Dusk's success in the indie space and with Doom's success in the AAA space, that like I'm I'm there's there's a million new boomer shooters coming out. I follow every Twitter <laughs> account that I see a new cool like animated GIF, and I'm just like, oh, I'll, I'll follow that game. Hopefully that turns out well. So I yeah, I was I was really really pleased with Dusk because it was like I did put some money into it, so I was like, oh, and when it came out and completely satisfied me, I was like, yes. I got I got two win. quick questions about it. Sure. Uh, is it? I think I may have got the answer to this one already, but this is more of a Doom than a Quake kind of thing, right? I'd say it's honestly a mix of two. And do you mean in terms of mechanics or like aesthetics? Like like level design. Like Doom doesn't have as much verticality as Quake, but of course, like nowadays, like you don't have the engine limits that Doom had, so. I, yeah, mostly in terms of level design, I guess. There's there's definite verticality to these levels. So I, I, I'd i say maybe skews towards Quake in that regard. Right, right. Yeah, in, in Doom, it was mostly like an elevator will bring you up to here. And if you yeah, run really or, fast, or, or, you can cross a gap. So. Or just like a small set of stairs or something. Like, yeah, 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 no, this is, this is more Quake feeling in, in that regard. And the other thing is, so the, 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 the level editor, is that in the game? Yeah. And... Like so, it's not like an external program or anything. Yeah, and no, it's, do, it's does not, that have yeah. online stuff? Like, can you access other people's levels from? Indie yeah, game? exactly. No, I oh, sorry, wow. I mentioned it really, really briefly, but yeah, you can you can download anybody's levels. That's a really nice feature set. That's really really cool. Having yeah, that built right in. If you're not gonna have multiplayer, like that's not that big of a deal if you have like all these levels so mm -hmm. when they actually do add multiplayer in there which i'm assuming is going to free be a free update i just like to assume but i don't know for sure i haven't looked mm -hmm. at the kickstarter page in, in a little while but that's going to be like a really awesome package once the multiplayer is in there right well cool all right that's so a, a, yeah. an addition to the list that i absolutely was not expecting Good, because we know we know some of the games on our list, but we don't know all of them. Like yeah. I forgot, I forgot all of yours because you showed oh, me a list good. like a month ago, and I was like, ah. Oh. So I know some, and you know some of mine. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I hope to surprise you later on. Okay, okay. Well, we'll see. Uh, number nine for me, not much of a surprise, uh, but it's Hyrule Warriors: Age of Calamity. 
Oh, uh, I number literally, nine only, num- though. Interesting. Number nine. I literally finished the game earlier today with my girlfriend because uh, we were playing it together. And uh, over the holidays, we didn't have as much time to play it. So it ended up pretty last minute. But uh, I immediately... Uh, it was already on my list. And I immediately just configured it to where I now felt... Uh, or sorry. I, I moved it around to where I think it's worth going now after having mm. finished it. Uh, I really like the game. Uh, I think in some regards, I enjoy it better than the original Hyrule Warriors. Uh, okay. The aesthetic I prefer. I think it comes together a lot better. Um, the story, I, I don't want to go into spoiler territory, but I felt a little let down by the story. Uh, okay. I was interested to see where it was going after a very early revelation that something is not as you expect in the pre breath of the wild universe. Mm -hmm. Um, and as the story went on, uh, I, I sort of came to realize that they weren't going to go as far with this narrative concept as I had hoped. Uh, Mm -hmm. they kind of, they kind of use it once during the story uh, to pull an ace out of your sleeve and give you a fighting chance. And I do like where the story goes. I do think it's a nice uh, a nice little narrative piece to accompany Breath of the Wild. Mm-hmm. But I wish they would have gone a little harder uh, for anyone who's like seen the Madoka movies, like something like Rebellion. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I get you. I, I would have liked to see more suffering in the story, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> to put it Zelda bluntly. has not suffered enough for me. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I, it is going to be pre-Breath of the Wild, right? So I had expectations about what I was going to be getting pre-Breath yeah, of the Wild. Yeah, yeah. And again, I do like what they delivered, uh, but I, I would have liked to see a little more suffering on the route to that. Uh, mm-hmm. The the main villain character, uh, I felt he was very weak and did not get almost any... Uh, significant chunk of the story devoted to him i don't know anything about this character except that he's bad um, okay i, I want to jump right in there right inside because i do have um age of calamity on my list as well but um uh just on that it's like you are totally right he doesn't get a lot but weirdly enough his design fit in so well with breath of the wild and zelda in general that i was like eh I, I don't, it was weird. It was like, I, I don't mind him so much. I would have liked more story stuff for him and to find out why exactly is he evil. But it's just weird. I kind of gave it a pass versus Hyrule Warriors like OCs that were in there that I kind of felt they felt way more like they're from like a Warriors game, like a, yeah. like a Samurai I, Warriors. I, I think I liked this story on average more than the original Hyrule Warriors. But I think elements of the original one interest me more. Okay. Uh, That makes sense. Yeah. Like I like, I like Sia as a villain. Her obsession with Link is very one note uh, and a little plain, but she has a a really clear motive and you you learn about her via Lana as well. She at least has a thing. Yeah, That's whereas saying, like yeah. Gumbo in in uh, Age of Calamity, I don't fucking know what Gumbo's deal is. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Like, <laughs> Gumbo. I can't even remember his name. But uh, actually, though, he's he's really not interesting, and that that disappointed me a little bit. Uh, I was also hoping that uh, I guess sort of just like Breath of the Wild. Unfortunately, I was hoping to have more missions that could focus on the champions. Uh, in, in Breath of the Wild, you know, with the new champions, the, the, the young champions, I felt like most of them were underdeveloped. You get a lot with Riju and not a lot with the others. And yeah. I, I was hoping that Age of Calamity could shore up some of the older um, champions' personalities, uh, particularly Rivali, who, like, does not get a lot. And unfortunately, oh, they don't, well, they don't really get Rivali more at later. all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, go ahead. Jump right in then, if you're if you're if you have feelings. Like, like, and one of my negatives of of Age of Calamity, I just have written here Rivali. <laughs> um, so I totally get character that's supposed to like you know be very prickly and not believe in your main hero and constantly be at odds with them, and you know it is always 
interesting and bold to not do what the audience is expecting. But at the end of this game, where there's never a cutscene and there's never a piece of dialogue where Vali says, huh, all right, pretty good, are giving you any sort of validation, then you're just a toxic asshole at that point. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I was just waiting for it. It didn't happen. I'm like, so he's just an asshole. Yeah. I um, couldn't believe it. All, all the champions are, are pretty darn one note, just like how they were in Breath of the Wild. Yeah, but, they are. But he definitely gets the least when he could have used the most. Um, and I do, I, I, this is a weirdly similar complaint to my complaints about Breath of the Wild, but I do really wish there were missions that had like some sort of light narrative thrust, even if they're side missions where it's like, you're going to play as the champion and they're going to do this and you're going to get to see a little more about them or see them yeah. in their culture, see how and, they're actually regarded by their people. And it's you know. weird because there's so many mission types and variety in all these missions. And that is something that they could have added. It's like, oh, you can pilot a divine beast. You can, you know, get more combos. You can do this, you can do that, blah, 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 blah. And they're, they're, they're like that your introductory mission to get that uh, get that champion on your side that's pretty much it like in terms of any light narrative thing but that's just them coming over to your side it doesn't really say anything much about them mm -hmm. themselves like you you oh we have to get herbosa oh there's like an there's like an evil princess there oh you need to get rivali well rivali just doesn't understand why you're here so he's just going to attack you and that's basically it and and i agree with that that is that is something that would have been nice since you're already having all these all these mission types like why not throw those in there i mean we're not asking for like a big elaborate cutscene. we're just like a little bit of dialogue that's all i mean one cutscene wouldn't hurt no okay <laughs> yeah no no but uh, I, I get what you mean and yeah i i, I agree just, ultimately like yeah they didn't get as much as i would have liked uh there's a lot of things i i do like about the game uh, a lot of great move sets in there uh yeah impa, impa in particular has a, a oh, really yeah. really awesome move set uh, I think my favorites were Link and uh, Light Spoilers King Rome, um, who I, I really enjoyed playing as. He's uh, crazy. He's a fighting game character. He's so sick. I swear his running animation is just Guts animation from Berserk with the sword <laughs> over the shoulder. Um, I, I really liked Link too. And you're like, you know, who would like Link? Like he would you know, technically be the most boring character. Just because I'm just a sword user. But the game puts more stuff into his move set like when when you get a spear or I, yeah. any other weapon type like that but yeah i i would go to him a lot him urbosa rome impa and uh zelda i'd say yeah. Sp spear link and urbosa were like two of my other favorites for sure spear link in particular i really enjoyed um i really like how they've kind of smushed everything onto one map uh, i like that too yeah i i dig the adventure map in hyrule warriors uh but I do think it kind of like splits the content in a weird mm -hmm. way where uh, you feel like y you're never going to go back to the story with these costumes. You finish the story and then you move on to the adventure maps uh, in this way, a little different because costumes aren't handled the same way. Uh, yeah. But in this way, you're getting stuff sort of while you're doing the story a little more. Um, so you actually get to use the stuff a little more often. Uh, costumes is a big negative. Um Really, like, yeah. Link, Link gets his customization stuff and, like, no one else really gets anything. It might uh, be something they're going to do with DLC, but I tend to think maybe not. I mean, I guess we'll see at this point. They haven't announced anything new Anything, for yeah. Launch, so. Weird. But, uh, yeah, I played through the whole thing in co-op. Uh, took around 15 hours, I think. Uh, really, really good time, honestly. I really enjoyed it. Uh, very excited to play this on my Switch Pro and see it running better because the, the, <laughs> yeah, the frame yeah, rate's yeah. pretty rough in uh, in split screen. I'm I'm not too sensitive to these types of things, so I still really enjoyed myself. But uh, if you are a little more picky about that, you will not enjoy the split screen experience in this game. Um, okay, yeah, I, I didn't solve. try any split screen, but like it's it's rough in single player as well. Mm. Okay, because when we briefly would play single player, uh, we'd be like, wow. It's amazing. <laughs> what an improvement. Oh, um, okay. 
Oh, uh, one one last thing. I yeah. really appreciate what they were going for with the uh, the uh, fuck. I forget what they're called. The sacred beast missions or whatever the sacred divine uh, beasts. The divine beast missions. I really appreciate what they're going for. I really like the idea of getting to control the divine beasts uh, and and getting to uh, wage genocide on Ganon's forces. There's like, there's no other word for it but genocide. Yeah, there's like a mission where you have to kill like twenty thousand enemies, and I'm like, holy shit! Are you I serious? Have point, you have to like, is this really worth it? Yeah, am I really the good guy here? Like, yeah, like this um, will destroy Hyrule's economy at the very least. <laughs> anyway, I, I really, really like what they were going for. Uh, they're not as fun on the whole. There are moments that really shine, like when you fire their giant lasers and you know swing them across the battlefield. It feels really good. Uh, but their their slow movement speed and some of their like less intuitive attacks aren't super enjoyable to use. Uh, the flying one in particular, Va, Va Meadow, I think I was I was least into. I liked Va Naboris a lot because one, I get to play as Urbosa, which is a nice right. thought, and two, <laughs> it had like a sort of trample, sort of like run attack, so you could yeah. make your way across the battlefield a little quicker. Um, I I I like that they're there, and I'm totally okay with how they are. But yeah, they're not they're not excellent or anything. They're because because thankfully actually, not the meat of the game either so they're, they're, probably they're only not. play like an hour tops by the end probably There's, less less than that even but, you, you don't have to do some of the missions i yeah. i actually really like them but there were moments where I, I forget which one it was but there was one beast where i'm like eh, okay I'll, I'll i'll play as it like uh you know just for this one mission or two and but there are others that i did really enjoy and I think if they were longer, like then it would have been a problem, but they never really overstayed their welcome in terms of mission length. But I could see if they went on even five minutes longer than than they usually are, then they would have been a bit like a, more approaching a slog to try and try to finish. But I I I really appreciate that they're there too, just because it was it was something very very different, and a Switch Pro would have. <laughs> definitely made them a bit better because that's what not that it matters too much because you're not doing you know combos and and trying to parry or not parry but like jump out of the way of things at the last second so you know a really smooth frame rate didn't matter too much but um uh i think if the game was to have like a switch pro version or whatever that might wind up being who knows yeah. that they'd be uh you know a bit more pleasant to go through but um i was always kind of like hey i'll do one of these tonight or you know so I, I'm, I'm very glad of their inclusion as well yeah no uh yeah, definitely agreed on that anyway that's my uh my number nine pick so i'll, I'll throw it back to you Oh, I caught it. Thank you. Thanks for that excellent throw. Number um, eight. Number eight. Uh, this is The Pathless, hmm. um, which which uh, Liam is also familiar with. I think we yes. both, when this game was uh, first shown, I want to say at like a Sony conference, perhaps? Um, Might have been. It was, it was at, been. at some event, yeah. It was uh, at some event. Yeah. And the moment you see the main character, who I believe is unnamed right um, i think they have a title but that's like it. like the 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 path or i don't know um <laughs> Uh, when when you see this character gliding on their knees across like a uh grassy glen at high speed shooting arrows at things i was just oh what are you it's so captivating um, like it, it was very captivating and it is the most captivating part of the game is its locomotion this was made by a uh, giant squid who mm -hmm. made abzu mm -hmm. and even if i hadn't said that if someone was to have played abzu and then this they'd probably know because abzu's a water adventure whereas the pathless is like a running flying adventure and um, it kind of has like a similar feel to it. I was actually playing Abzu again not too not too long ago on my Switch, and I was like, "Huh, yeah, that is that is very similar, like this bit and that bit." But um, uh, Abzu is basically you in that sort of Okami mold of bringing life back to uh, like these gorgeous. Oh, uh, you mean vistas. you mean the pathless for this one? 
Sorry, yes. Uh, did I say Abzu? <laughs> yeah, you said Abzu. It's okay. Okay, <laughs> yeah. sorry. Uh, the Fapless is is that, and uh, you are beating. You know, I I thought of the two, the the three games. You know, I, I sometimes I don't like saying like, oh, it's this meets this and this, but I mean, I'm pretty confident by saying this. The Pathless is a mix of Journey, Shadow of the Colossus, and Breath of the Wild. Um, in that you, there's very few enemies. There's essentially like five, I think. Yeah. And they're all bosses and they all have a specific way, a very specific way in how you approach these, these boss fights. Um, it is like Breath of the Wild because, you know, it has a very open sort of feeling to it and you're using an, a bow and arrow in a lot and it's a lot like Journey in that, um... It's sort of art style, and again, it's it's locomotion has has the that kind of feel, um, and you're constantly clearing out these these layers of this world. They they keep rising, and uh, you're defeating these these uh, four bosses, and then like a main boss, um, and that's all you're basically doing. You're just and you can explore these 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 different um, environments uh, as you're going on. And the part that I found the most enjoyable is actually doing all the puzzles because you can level up your character as you go through. You don't necessarily have to, but you can. And I actually enjoyed the puzzle element to this game like quite a bit, a bit more than like the boss fights, for example. I, um, I agree, actually. The, the, the puzzles to me were like a big high point, And I totally agree. Much better than the combat sequences. Because they're never, they're always simple. But they're never like, you know, oh, okay, wait, what do I do here? They they have these kind of like templates that they follow, but then some of them are more elaborate than others and they mix things up. And I never felt frustrated by them. They never felt brain dead to me. And you always get, you know, something that's a bit worth it. Like, oh, this levels up the, the amount of times that you can fly or flap because your main hero has like this very cute uh, eagle character. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'd say they're always simple, but they're certainly all, they're like, they're a really nice level of difficulty, just hard enough to make you feel smart every time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I need that boost all the time. Yeah, not not hard enough that I ever got stuck, like meaningfully stuck on any of them. You know, you might do a step in the wrong order and have to back up. Yeah, but like, I, know, I, I, I think simple, I think simple was the wrong word. I think I meant clear. Yeah. I think I meant like clear. It's like, okay, yeah, I have true. everything I need to do this i just need to figure out the right order and it's you know they're they're very environmental puzzles but i love doing them um that, and that's something i think the game was really good at like legibility in general there was yeah. never a moment where i'm like what am i doing or where am i you know like everything is super clear cut that that their their artists are fucking amazing honestly. and there's not there's like a there's a very small amount of text or tutorial telling you what to do. I think like the first and biggest one is like, oh, press, you know, X twice in the air to do a double jump or like a flap or, you know, flap, whatever yeah. it is. And then after that, the game kind of just tells you via, you know, visual cues like, oh, this is an unlit lantern. Well, there's a fire over there. It's like, you know, Zelda-ish stuff, but done really well. Like we've already both alluded to, um, uh, for, for me at least like well but you said as well that the bosses are kind of the bosses are fun when you're doing them um, they're you know it's hard to say that they're challenging because you can't particularly die against them and they're the only mm -hmm. real threat the problem is that they all go in like a three form structure and those forms do differ a little bit but it's essentially the same thing you have a chase against the boss then a uh kind of closed arena encounter and then that closed arena encounter switches slightly and you're never the 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 the, the boss forms themselves like they're all very similar it's just like a fiery dark monster and I did want to do them because once you complete them, you release that boss from like this corrupted form. And then if you uh, kind of max out getting all the uh, boss, uh, sorry, um, like the god uh, emblems. Things. Yeah. 
And that's the that that's the, the other interesting thing ab- uh, about this game, where it's like it wasn't a hundred percent clear what you needed to do because the game doesn't tell you, but uh, via text. But you figure it out. So you're like, oh, okay. So if I get if I do if I complete the map of this boss after having defeated its corrupted form, that'll give me something. I don't know what that does. So you go around the map, completing all the rest of the puzzles and any any collectibles you might have missed. And then you re- you like get to see the that god in its like pure good form, and you have this fun little chase around the environment where it's it's leaping and it's happy and it's you're following it, and it gives you a really cool level up to something in your in your repertoire, like you can uh, run faster and blah blah. You don't have to do this stuff, but it was there, and like that part, like I just wanted to get the boss fight over, so I can do that bit. Um, and I really enjoyed doing that bit, but like the bosses are just so, so similar. And it, it did give me this very rinse and repeat style, like fatigue, not enough that it made me stop playing, um, which is good, but just enough where I was like, eh, well, this is kind of, you know, the, um, I can expect the same thing on the next boss. And each time it never disappointed in giving me kind of the same thing. Um, so I do wish they kind of found some way to vary that up like you know like shadow the colossus does like oh this colossus is in the water or this one's in this completely different environment but here it's it's kind of the same thing every time but it's like the strength of this game's like art it's animation it's music like some moments are so strong mm-hmm. like you're you're when it, when it hits it really does totally it 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 it, it really really does and that was the thing that like i want to see the next environment um and so that's what keeps you going and it's weird because it's like this is the most game that giant squid has done did they do something before abzu Uh, i believe abzu was their first as a studio of course a lot of them were like x that game company so they worked of course that makes sense then uh abzu is barely is is barely a game like in in terms of what you're usually expect to do in games you're basically just going through it, water it's and ex- interactive and it's simple but yeah like, you know it's it's yeah it's no uncharted if that's what you're <laughs> it's, measuring it's no a game uncharted. as yeah <laughs> um but like everything about the world and it's and what they've kind of accomplished here in terms of art is just really really strong it's like the game part is just quite not up to snuff whereas like abzu is like almost perfect in what it's trying to do whereas this like is just like misses the mark like a little bit but i mean it's still all of its world building and its animation, like pettable eagle, petting the eagle, getting rid of like the kind of corruption that it that it, it accused once it's fought a boss was like so satisfying. Because what what are we doing? We're rubbing the touchpad, right? Or is it uh, moving the control? No, stick? you you move the left stick. But man, yeah, they did an amazing job with like IKN animation to to yeah. uh, to let you control your character the hunter's hand as it like moves across the eagle's so satisfying. body it's it's gorgeous it's such a nice effect like, whoever whoever put that together did an amazing job yeah uh, but if any of those three things that i mentioned journey shadow of the colossus breath of the wild if anyone's like kind of into those like i definitely think because i was this full price i don't believe no. it was right no it, it wasn't although the physical ps5 version is not super cheap either it's a little right. on the higher end of the indie spectrum so. right but i mean i'd still even though like i kind of the the reason why i was you know sort of um like i i i'm saying being uh, harsh it, on the boss fights because the game is like close to being like special like something you'll you'll remember for a while, but because of this repetitive nature, it just holds it back just a little bit. But I would still like greatly recommend the Pathless in general. Yeah, I, I um I mean I would definitely say if you're interested in playing it and you have an Apple device, it's on Apple Arcade. So you can buy a one month sub and have a go at it. It supports okay. controllers via Bluetooth, which is cool. Uh, if you've got a Xbox One or PS4 pad kicking around, uh, those work just fine. I think I mentioned this to you before. It, it missed my list, uh, but I did play through it. 
For me, I really didn't enjoy the stealth sections after like the second or third time I fell I, subject to one. Yeah, like I weirdly enough, I fi- I was able to finish the first one without any problems. Every sub as a couldn't one, I'd <laughs> always get wrecked. And I was like, uh, how? I'm being more careful. <laughs> Evidently not. Um, yeah, the, the stealth sections are kind of if a monster catches you, you get pulled into a brief stealth encounter. Yeah. But they don't they don't really evolve significantly. Uh, and it's at a certain point I found it not enjoyable to get sucked into them. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the the enemies are so toothless. Um, I don't know if there's a death state. I don't think there is. There is not. Uh, <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I found that kind of disappointing. The only punishment the game ever hands out is if you fail the stealth section, you lose some of your hard got experience uh, for your. For yeah, your that is that is a, um, yeah. which is a, a pretty rough one, but. Uh, I don't know. I, I didn't. I didn't find it that uh, engaging. Um, I sorry. I didn't find them that engaging. The bosses uh, because of that. Like there was. I just didn't feel like there was a threat. Sort of. The, which the, is a the shame first. Because they're gorgeous. Um, the first time you do one, yeah, that one, cool. Sure. But then yeah. when the you do the others, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Huh. Especially the last boss where I was like, oh, oh, yeah. You know, you're really cool and all, but I know you can't. He has uh, is the God Slayer, God Slayer Bowser was his name. I think his name is the God That's it. Slayer. That's the one. Um, his design is so sick and so strong, but it's like yeah. yeah, the the boss fight itself is like you know a little. It's not too different from what you've done before. Yeah, uh, and narratively, also the game I didn't find it interesting at the end. Uh, you, it's, it's not that interesting. You come to this island and you you learn a little about the backstory if you if you read a lot of stuff. But all you do is you sort of just turn these animals back and then everything's good. Yeah, uh, fortunately... The, you, fla- you flash some thumbs up and then you're out. <laughs> fortunately, it doesn't throw story at you. It's just no, yeah. like it's 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 window dressing. If they threw the story at you, if you, l- if you look at all the, like, I guess, what are they? Dead memories of, like, bodies that have, like, did... Like, those, if you actually sat and read those, those are not interesting. You don't have to. But they're essentially, yeah. like, reading notes of people that have died and, like after like two or three they're always usually the same thing and they're so vague that they're not really worth reading yeah definitely so. finding them all as well if you're trying to collect them all is is uh, a little bit yeah no tedious, thanks honestly um so yeah but moving is so cool and shooting yeah. arrows and the sound of the arrows and the music like they're all too strong that i i couldn't not still have it on my list because i i did greatly enjoy those bits it's just like the yeah like what we talked about just it just kind of makes it just miss them miss the mark of being much higher on my list yeah i feel you all right so what do you have for your number eight number eight uh half-life alex uh oh right a, okay a super good vr game you may have heard of it in the indie half-life series yeah um, i've heard of that series yeah I, I don't know what's up with the company they haven't made one in a while but mm. here we are uh half-life alex uh, i'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of it uh it kind of probably is the highest profile vr game since i don't know like re7 or something it's been a hot minute um yeah, it's it's excellent. <laughs> I don't know what do you want me to say. It's so fucking good. <laughs> uh, it probably the the only thing that I don't like about Half Life Alex is a big chunk of the game is Half Life style shooting. That is to say, it's very good, very engaging combat with uh, good enough enemies and cool enough guns. But you know, I've played plenty of first person right. shooters and first person VR shooters, and I don't want to say they all blend together. But, you know, after you've played a few of them, the thrill of crouching behind something and reaching your gun around it to shoot over, I mean, it never fully wears off, but it kind of settles in. And the combat bits ended up being sort of a, I don't want to say a low light, but sort of a, eh. So the reason this didn't place higher is because a lot of the game is just sort of really high quality, but regular ass first person shooter stuff. Okay. Um, The thing that really elevates this game is the insanely high level of polish everything is pushed to and some particularly great uh, set piece moments. Um, a big highlight is this one chapter of the game where you're uh, you're in a, a fairly confined environment and you have to get through it 
with this monster who is trying to find you. The monster is the stereotypical blind but good hearing monster. <laughs> right. Uh, and, and those monsters are cool, but they're very old hat, right? So what makes this one so good? The environments are small and they're cramped and you are in there with it. It is a very intimate, very scary experience. Uh, you, uh, I believe you're in a bottling factory and you have to uh, duck around it and reach around it and try to just not get too close to it all the while you have to actually you know physically move your body near it uh, mm -hmm. it's a very very harrowing experience and there's uh, very impressive liquids in these bottles i'm told oh yeah yeah the bottle the, <laughs> uh, the liquid shader looks amazing um er, early in the the chapter they teach you you know you oh you look you can throw bottles to distract it right very again very normal stuff for this right. type of monster um but as you're in a bottling factory, you eventually get to rooms that have, like, a lot of bottles. Like, don't <laughs> bump into them. Like, there's a lot of them. Oh, um, okay. So uh, th there are some that are set up uh, just to fuck you up if you move wrong because you'll knock them off a table or, or some such. And hopefully you catch it on the way down. Uh, you definitely get that, that feeling of satisfaction when you catch your drink off the bar that all your friends just saw. Uh, <laughs> kind of like that. Um those those moments really elevate Half Life, Alex. The, the the special cool set pieces. I think that's really the the, the big highlight for me is this one monster chapter, um, and and that to me is the reason it's it's this high on the list. Uh, mm -hmm. But like, look, if you just want a really really good VR first person shooter, you're gonna get exactly that. Uh, it's not gonna blow your mind in a lot of ways. Uh, the ending might if you're a Half-Life fan. I'm not a particular Half-Life mark, so like it's cool, but like you know, it doesn't doesn't hit me the same, I guess. Um, well, that that says a lot that the game was still able to impress you enough that you're not a Half-Life mark, but you 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 could see the the quality and the polish to the game itself. Yeah, it, I mean, it's still just so good, regardless. You know, I don't I don't need you to tell me why this crowbar is good. It just feels <laughs> good, you know. So. Um, the, uh, the gravity glove that you get given is a really fun tool. Other VR games have had similar things where you can, you know, pull objects in and, and such from a distance, and uh, it's always enjoyable. Um, you know, not, not the most fresh VR game I've played, but, like, fuck, it's a master class in taking stuff I've seen before and I thought maybe I was over and really refreshing it. Uh, also, gorgeous game. Uh, my PC... Of course, VR games, you want to be running them at, at quite high frame rates. Um, All right. It, it is... I have a somewhat old PC... Well, anyway, whatever. I have a 1050 <laughs> Ti. So, you know, not the worst, but not the best. Uh, some sections I was sort of not getting an ideal frame rate, but I but I powered through because I was very into it. If, you're hard, if your computer can handle it and you're looking for a kick-ass VR FPS, like, you really can't go wrong. Um... Uh, one thing that I'd also like to mention is I played this uh, using an Oculus Quest that was wired uh, to my PC. Um, for any, I've seen people online express that they'd like to play it, but a Valve Index is too expensive. Um, I just want to let you know that I didn't feel like playing with an Oculus Quest was at all compromised. Uh, mm. I, I, I do think that obviously it's, it's got pretty good support for the knuckle controllers uh, that the Index touts. Uh, but I, I really don't think that if, if that's something you're worried you're going to be missing out on, you should worry about it at all. Uh, you'll be just fine with any other VR headset, and you could save upwards of half the price or more, depending on what you can find other headsets for. So Yeah, because uh, I've seen people being confused about what they would actually need and like what it's playable on, so that, that that's good that you're clarifying. Yeah, uh, it, it's... It's a lot. I mean, VR stuff's new and it's expensive and it unfortunately doesn't all always work nice together. Mm -hmm. But uh, this this setup with a Quest and uh, a, a good PC, well, a decent PC <laughs> was enough. Uh, Why are you so. ragging on your own PC so hard? <laughs> well, because it's like, my PC's good. It's perfectly good for what I need to use it for. Okay. But calling it like a new gaming PC or something would be weird because mm -hmm. the parts are like starting to get out of date i guess right, for like right, right. what modern expectations are and and half-life alex is no slouch for sort of the specs it demands it, it definitely far exceeds like last gen ps4 xbox one ports okay. on pc 
So, you know, you definitely got to get the right gear for it. Uh, super, super good game. Uh, doesn't reinvent the wheel at almost any time, but these wheels sure do spin nice. So, <laughs> go ahead, Matt. All righty. Thank you. My, this is seven. Yes, yeah, seven. Number seven. seven. Thank you. Uh, number seven is what up Montreal because it's time for Panzer Paladin um, made by Tribute Games who who have made stuff in the past that have always been of a certain like high quality but nothing they had made before like really made me like I tried out Flint Hook and I was like yeah Flint Hook yeah okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but Panzer Paladin, I saw it at PAX East years ago, and and honestly, I'm going to say that it was David Liu, um, D. Slugi on Twitter's key <laughs> art of the game, uh, and he's really, really good at drawing like 80s era, 80s and like early 90s era anime, and their, his key art for the game, like at their booth, made me go, okay, what are you? Um, because... To stand out with an NES throwback is pretty hard nowadays because, you know, so many people do it, like 8, 16-bit throwbacks. But um, his art, like, being a, a part of it just made me go, okay, well, let, let me try this out. And I tried it out at PAX East, and I really liked it. Didn't I think there were some things that weren't working in it yet or the level I was playing. Um, not everything was in there, but... Um, I did do a video on the channel like a few months back and I really liked the game back then. And uh, since that video, I I had finished it and I just really, really enjoyed it. Again, it's one of those games that doesn't do a a whole lot of new things. It does do some interesting, cool things. I know you've played this game like Mm -hmm. a a fair amount. I'm not sure if you've beaten it. No, I did not finish it. Okay. but it it has this nice mix of old and new things where it's mostly like old style, old style, like difficulty. If you die, you get sent back to the start of the level unless you do the mid mid game checkpoint thing. Um, but it takes a lot from like mech games like Metal Storm, a little bit of, of like Blaster Master. And you play as a flame which is this cool like android uh, android girl and uh, she pilots her mech grit flame mm. and grit mm, that's like that's enough to kind of land in the top 10 for me you f- you figure out a good uh, uh, name for a character and their their like sidekick or their vehicle whatever it is I always as soon as i heard his flame and grit i was like oh man it's super uh, strong honestly Can't it is wrong with those names <laughs> And and they like have little convert like because this game is not a like a heavy cutscene game but there there is some dialogue sequences and there's a fun uh, back and forth between them but um, um, as you play through this game you'll be doing a lot of Mega Man style levels where you can pick them in whatever order but like one of the strong points about this game is that you're going to be playing through levels of the world that you don't normally see in video games like you're going to mexico china canada the first level you play through is in canada Mm -hmm. and of course like a hockey stick is one of the weapons that you find in canada uh because the 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 new thing about this game is that uh you're constantly picking up weapons melee melee weapons and they all have different stats uh, damage outputs, and they all wear down over time. Mm-hmm. But you it's the press is a wild of video games, really. It, it, it's it, it really sort of, kind of, almost sort of, maybe not is. Um, <laughs> I do like how all of these weapons have like different functions. Like you can just des- destroy a weapon in your hand, and it will actually heal you. Like the energy will go into mm-hmm. you. You can take a weapon and sacrifice it into like a midpoint. Uh, save altar you don't have to but you can and every weapon has like this overall corruption level that is bad it and it kind of institutes like a mid boss fight where the horseman which is like this other character think of like proto man and he'll come to try to fight you in case your corruption level is too high there's all this neat stuff going on with the weapon system and it's good because I feel like they put a lot of emphasis into that because it's the level design of this game is very cool visually. Like uh, all these tile sets look really like fun and authentic to the era. 
of that it's trying to harken back to. But in like the, the 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 negative I have on this game is that its level design is never like that interesting in terms of the obstacles you'll be facing. Like in a Mega Man game, like you know, Gutsman level has these things, or you know, Airman's level has this. It's like that doesn't really play much of a factor into Panzer Paladin. Um, there'll be some little differences, but it's just mostly fighting, you know, a couple of the same enemies, jumping over pits. Um, and it's more of a visual thing to the levels. They're still fun to look at. And while you're doing them, the soundtrack that accompanies it is really, really strong. But outside of that, its levels are kind of not the highlight. The highlight is playing around with all these fun weapons, designing your own weapons, because there's a little paint tool in the game that's actually pretty robust that lets you mm -hmm. make your own weapons. And that stuff's really fun. And the boss fights, because all these bosses are these crazy mythological monsters from all these corners of the world, and they're really fun. Um, they're never too taxing. Um, they're not pushovers. If you if you were just lucky enough to collect a bunch of really strong weapons, you can kind of just power through them, but not all the time. And I just found the game just like really pleasant to play. Like I didn't really have like a particular problem. This is kind of like my um, uh, a Ghost of Tsushima to you, whereas like I didn't feel that it was really excellent in any one area, but there was never really like a huge problem with it. Like the only thing really was that its its levels don't have like a whole bunch of surprises for you. And that, that's really basically it. Like, I, I enjoyed it from start to finish. And there's never not one thing that made me go like, oh, though, this is kind of a drag. But at the same time, there was nothing it did that was like super excellent. So like Panzer Paladin, when I was playing it and I did a video for the channel, I was kind of just like really enthusiastic because I think at that point I was playing a bunch of crappy games. Like I was just like, oh, let me play like fucking Golden Axe Beast Rider or something for for the channel. So when I decided to boot this up, um, I I just it was just such a a breath of fresh air. So I wound up really enjoying it overall. And um, I, I guess the one like kind of thing I wished is that because of the weapon editor, which you could only make really easily with like like a basic swing of a melee weapon, you don't get anything outside of that realm. So you can't get like a bow and arrow or projectile or like a flail, nunchucks, that type of thing. Your weapons behave like pretty similarly. You can like do like a, you know, shovel knight, like pogo, like strike down and you can do like a back step and there, there's things you can do, but like your weapons don't behave like incredibly differently from each other, which is a little bit of a thing, but it did help them focus on melee weapons, which is which is still admirable that they 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 picked a they picked like a, a choice to do and kind of stuck with it rather than doing a bunch of things. But I still would have liked like a little bit more weapon variety. But that's basically it for 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 negatives for Panzer Paladin. Sure. Yeah, I I played it and I I kind of would echo what you said. Yeah, like there was nothing particularly. Uh, exceptional that stood out to me, but it's it's just a really solid experience from start to almost finish. Again, I didn't quite finish the game, but um, you're not wrong about how like it's kind of a shame that you only have melee weapons. But they did a they did a pretty solid job with the because there's lots, there's tons, yeah, and um, they do like have different too. reaches and 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 various effects. Like one will heal you if you crush it and give you this. And there's all these bonuses. There's all these little things, but just the, when you press a button, they react the same. Then that's like mm. the only thing. The the weapon special abilities are definitely a big highlight. Like, you know, picking up the next weapon and getting to see what exactly it does. Tucking it away in your back pocket because oh I want this one for the boss for a boss yeah uh, exactly you'll you'll find one that's really high high in stats like higher damage or whatever and you're like so there's like this there's this weird like you know background game you're playing like and it, but it's strange because you're playing like a game that looks like an NES game but you're thinking in the back of your head about the weapons that you have and you're cycling through them so it's it's a it's a really interesting mix of things it, this is the type of game that if they made a sequel like I I like. The sky's the limit there. Like they have, they had such a good base 
to yeah. to work okay. off of and and like uh, add more to that I would really be interested in a sequel. But Tribute Games doesn't strike me as a as a studio that will go back to the well and do other stuff. Like I feel like they're always going to be wanting to do more things. But more power to them. Yeah, definitely. It would be cool, but you're right. I don't. I couldn't name a sequel that they've made so far. So yeah. You know. Yeah. So that is my number seven. Cool. Well, my number seven, also shout outs to Montreal, is Streets of Rage 4. Um, this game's excellent. This game's amazing. <laughs> this is maybe... You like Streets is, of Rage 4? Yes, it's fucking excellent. It's so good. Uh, this is my favorite beat-em-up since... The Takeover. I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, God, I don't... I don't even know. Maybe Dragon's Crown, and that, and even then, that's mostly because of like the amazing aesthetics and such. Uh, Streets of Rage Four is just such an incredible, rock solid uh, beat 'em up, mm-hmm. um, and it really went beyond what I anticipated from it. Uh, I, you know, from the day it was announced, I was a little scared. Yeah, uh, that I might not enjoy it, that it might feel wrong, that it might just be alien. What if it feels like Final Fight? Then it's ruined. You know, it's ruined. Um, but man, they really, they really went and fucking did it. Like, <laughs> they did, they did. They did um, you know, probably the biggest gameplay change that they did was adding uh, a more involved, or I should say, an involved juggling system, mm-hmm. uh, which is something that the the old games really never had. Uh, I I was very skeptical of this at first that this might sort of change the change identity the of feel, the game yeah. too much. Yeah, but but generally speaking. You're not. You don't end up doing massive combos in a normal playthrough. Once you've played through the game and you've got some experience, you're able to, to rack up some uh, some pretty long juggles. But early on, it, it feels a lot like Streets of Rage. It feels very normal. Very a lot of grounded combos, a lot of jump ins that that end up getting punished by Donovan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it it felt right right out of the gates. But my favorite Streets of Rage game is is the first one. I think I've mentioned this before, uh, and a lot of beat em ups try to sort of ape Streets of Rage 2 a lot, so I was also a little scared that it would be too Streets of Rage 2 y for me. Uh, it's all three, you know. honestly. It, it's like, it's kind of its own thing too at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it does, have its, it does have its own feel. It, it picks up things from each of them uh, and, and really adds to it. Uh, it also adds its own, um, like, hyper attack system. I don't remember what they're called, but the the, the, the supers that take I think the they're just well, called. Star it's kind moves, of a mashup. It's kind of a mashup of the old systems along with some new stuff. Honestly, it's not it's not entirely new, but it's mm-hmm. not entirely old either. That, and I, I guess that's sort of the name of the game for the whole thing. Um, I, I really appreciate where it went narratively. Uh, they didn't just redo Mister X again, uh, which would have been really easy to do. They introduced uh, a new related cast of characters mm-hmm. uh i like the newcomers uh i like how i do they too a lot relate to the old cast yeah they're, they're really I, awesome i actually. thought i wasn't gonna like uh well no i always like cherry but i thought uh, floyd i really thought i wasn't gonna like him and i played around with him a bit i was like oh i really like him actually which i wasn't expecting he's really fun honestly he's super fun to play as and and uh i mean all all the characters are extremely fun to play as this there are 17 characters in the game uh <laughs> five of them are streets of rage four characters the rest of them are the vast majority of the characters from the first second and third game uh rest in peace rue um and all, all the old characters feel great and they feel just like i just threw my pen across the room they you feel see, so passionate folks <laughs> they feel just like how you remember them uh, with, with some minor changes to make them a little more playable in the, in the new system with the new systems like juggling and such. Um, but the streets of rage four characters are just fucking lavish. They're gorgeous. They sound great. Yeah. They yeah. Great. They, they play excellently as well. Um, they have extremely robust move sets. Uh, no RPG elements in this game. Everything's, uh, I think that would have been too go, crazy of a really change. Like. RPG yeah, I, elements, I, like I think some people might not have liked that. I wouldn't have liked it either. I think a lot of people would have liked it in the in the name of content. This yeah, game has stuff to earn and stuff to do. Mm-hmm. The only stuff you really earn in this game, I believe, is the gallery and of course the uh, other characters. You only mm-hmm. start the game with thir- 
three. God, I haven't started a new I, game in quite a while. Uh, uh, you start. I believe with, you start you with start Cherry Axel Blaze. Do you start with Floyd as well? Yeah, maybe you do. Yeah, anyway, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, you, I haven't started a new game in a while, so you have to forgive me. Um, but you unlock the characters as you play through, and that's pretty satisfying. Uh, it is. A uh, big change up is bosses now pose way more of a threat than they used to. Um, I and this game also is not toothless on difficulty, especially on your first playthrough. Um, Definitely not. You're, you're certainly going to encounter some game overs on the way through. Uh, there is a learning curve. You will get better. You will eventually manage to not die, but but it's not afraid to uh, to well to beat you up as you go through <laughs> it. Um, it's, it's not the, afraid the, to belt scroll you. <laughs> right. Uh, the the bosses are great, though, on the whole. Uh, I don't think there's one that I really dislike. Um, and I, a lot of the newcomers are, are I, I really enjoyable. I think that t- that one techno one. God, I forget their name. Oh, they, uh, DJ. Uh, fuck the DJ. Yeah, that, that, was, that was the one I, I definitely, I could say I liked the least. But sure. still not bad or, you know, even approaching bad. Just I was like, eh. You know. Yeah, that's that's fair. Um, he, he has maybe he has the least going on, and he has a bit of a, a, a reliance on the mob enemies who come in. Yeah, but, uh, I, I liked fu- him because he doesn't overlap other uh, bosses. That really is at true. All. That is true. The He's final really boss is like time. a really good fight. At first, when you're going through it, you're like, "Oh, it's it's just going to be this," and then it keeps going and going. And you're like, "Oh shit, okay, here we go." And that was because sometimes beating up bosses are just like, "It's yeah, it's just me," and that's it. Um, so when they do more with that, that's always appreciated. Yeah, the last level is a total drag out as well. Like definitely the longest level in the game, and yeah. it's uh, it's a really strong one. It's really tough too, actually. There's a lot of uh, choke points in there where I remember game overing. Um, they they also put out a, an excellent balance patch for the game that arguably made that level harder, which is pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, man, just it, it's just such a good beat 'em up. The only reason that this has placed so low on my list is because of all the games on my top 10, it's also the one that I have the most distinctly negative criticism of. Um, and it bums me out. Uh, I think this game has a very, very troubled scoring system. Uh, and really? If give a sh- if, yeah, I, I really do. I don't remember and hearing if, you say talk about this before, so I'm interested. I, I, don't, I don't think we did talk about this. So uh, <laughs> if you don't care about your scores, if you don't care about trying to get the trophies, if you don't care about any of that, then you, you won't notice this. And that's probably for the best, honestly. Um, the scoring system, I think, is incredibly troubled. So you punch enemies to build, or you hit enemies, you hit anything to build up your combo. Uh, certain actions will keep your combo from expiring slash cashing out. Uh, like um, when you hit an enemy's shield, it doesn't count as a hit, but it'll keep your combo from expiring. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when you let your combo sit for long enough, it will cash out. You'll get all the points for your combo. Um, so uh, the thing that I really don't like about the combo system, uh, well, the main thing, one of the main things, there's a lot going on, is... If you take a hit during your combo, you receive zero points for your combo. Your combo is entirely eliminated. Um, This leads to an incredibly negative uh, loop where (laughs) you'll start a level and you'll work your way through the level and Mm -hmm. get like a 150, 200 hit combo and you'll take a glancing hit from an enemy and you will know my score is ruined. I have to restart the level because I got zero points for that. I just wasted most of the level's enemies. And I right, got right. Nothing for it. And part of the reason why I really don't like this system uh, is uh, because a, a player who plays worse but more conservatively can score better than a player who plays better and makes one mistake. Mm-hmm. So if a player plays through a level and they only get 20 hit combos and they cash them out successfully and between those 20 hit combos they take a bunch of hits and they all and they and maybe they die even um if they finish the level they'll get they'll get a score reflective of the fact that they've uh got such and such amount of life they finished in such and such amount of time and they cashed out all these 20 hit combos if a player plays through the level and gets a 1000 hit combo which i don't think is actually possible in any level 
but they accidentally get hit by the boss as the boss is on their last hit point, uh, and they lose that combo. And that's the first time they got hit in the level, and then they strike the boss one more time to end the level, finishing with a one-hit combo that doesn't count for anything. The first player will score higher. Uh, okay. Even though the second player took way less damage, and the second player performed much better uh, offensively. It feels more like to get a good score, you have to play the combo system well than play the beat em up well. You have I to, see, okay. Unless you play perfectly and you absolutely master it, which is admittedly valid, um, it demands that at certain points you stop your combo intentionally uh, in order to mitigate the point damage you will take for a random glancing blow from an enemy. Um, right, and... The, just to give people some proper context, like just normally, I mean, score, yeah, sure, who cares about score? But your score is what helps you unlock all these characters too. Like there's a function hey. to getting these. And if you're accustomed to a certain way in, in playing a game, it, it navigates combo system, whatever, then you're going to find you're going to be unlocking these characters like quite slowly. Is that... Is that a bit well, into what you're saying, or is this like aside from the unlocking? No, of characters? no. The, the, to be honest, this is aside from that because I actually okay. think like the the doling out of characters is at a really good pace. I don't think anyone will really be affected by this, except for people who try to go for scores. And oh, okay, particularly, okay. there are game designed things in the game, uh, <laughs> such as this one trophy that a lot of people have had hard times with, uh, myself included, where it encourages you to try to get S ranks on all the stages on hard. It can mm -hmm. be very frustrating to get a massive combo in a stage and take a glancing hit and know that you unfortunately have to restart the level uh, because, hey, that that has ruined it. Um, and if I had just done less big combos, then sure, I would have probably been fine. And, you know, if you're thinking, well, Liam, you should just do less big combos and <laughs> well, cash Liam. them out, I think that's a perfectly valid thing, actually. But I don't think it's particularly fun or beat em up y to at some point during a combo hold back and mm. be like, let me just wait. Let me just let this cash out. So it doesn't, I, I don't know. It doesn't give me the right feeling. The other thing is that the score system, I find this is a lesser complaint, but yeah. still valid. The score system and getting an S rank is heavily, heavily weighed towards getting massive combos. Um, Unless you finish a level without taking a hit, in which case I believe you get a, a rather large but incredibly difficult to achieve score bonus, the only way to get good ranks is to get incredibly long combos without getting them interrupted. Um, and it, it it can be really tedious and lead to a lot of um, negative sentiment when you're replaying 7 to 10 minute long levels over and over just trying to to get a score that can scratch an S rank. Yeah. I, I'm um, looking something up, just Streets of Rage, and like this article popped up on PC Gamer and it's giving you tips and it says, learn when to end your combos. If you're a beat em up expert and breeze through the game without getting hit, you'll be racking up points like crazy. But if you're like me, you'll often work up to a nice maybe 20 or 30 hit combo only to be interrupted by a single attack you just couldn't avoid. If you want to keep those points, consider avoiding the action for a few seconds when you've built up a good combo and just let the combo end safely. True, hmm. that will stop you from earning the bigger reward of bigger combos, but it seems that in this game, slow and steady is the key. Yeah, I, I mean, ultimately that's one of the things I don't like about the scoring hmm. system is I Interesting. Think slow and steady ends up being a key if you're not absolutely insane at this game mm -hmm. you know like uh i i cannot claim to be able to do any sort of full combo through a level but i do regularly get 100 to 200 hit combos uh level dependent um and it's even more frustrating than the example given where the guy expresses that he was getting 20 to 30 hit combos um and getting them stuffed i just really didn't find that fun mm -hmm. um, that when your combos get stuffed you get nothing and potentially and not even potentially, like there's very easy theoretical examples. You can play through a level worse and cash out low combos and get a higher score than someone who takes less damage yeah. 
and gets bigger combos that get stuffed. So uh, I, I find the score at the end isn't reflective of the quality of their play. It's reflective of the quantity of hits you took at high combo, a uh, high risk situations. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is very, of the that's, damage, that's, I've so. never heard such a, such a thing. And, and now that you've explained it, I was like, yeah, that if you're, yeah, I, I could see that rubbing some people the wrong way off the back of that though. While that's not something that, you know, I, I, I personally noticed, I did want to speak about like, cause guess, guess what? Spoiler streets of rage four is also like in my list. But, um, <laughs> the, the thing I wanted to, cause you, you mentioned it a little bit earlier and I, I wanted to, to talk about it there, but I thought I'd wait, but this is a good time. Yeah. Whereas ahead. like the, f- the, the f- uh, four starting characters and then the one you unlock through story, and then all the other old sprite characters you unlock later on, um, that, my biggest negative for Streets of Rage at four, and it's not even that big because you know once you start unlocking these characters, it it alleviates it. Is that like for being the title characters, I find that Streets of Rage four Axel and Blaze are like the least fun to play, and simply for mm. the fact that, and I get what they're doing, and I applaud them for it, but actually giving your characters less utility than some others is always going to be kind of a negative. The fact that Blaze and Axel cannot run, dash, have any forward momentum at all, and they have to just do their regular walk cycle would like made me not want to play them. And I think go ahead. What? Don't no, you right. go, you you go ahead. You think what? I think uh for Axel, I feel you. Uh the patch did improve him, but I feel you. For Blaze, I think you need to explore Blaze a little more. Because she's arguably the best character in the game. And particularly if you start taking advantage of her uh, special attack in the air, the, mm-hmm. the upwards dive kick, you can you can get some really good uh, some really good screen some really good, screen really fast movement. screen movement going. Yeah, I know. Even if you don't have a full sprint with her or anything you, like that. You you're totally um, right, but their intention here was well, let's make the characters play, you know, pretty differently. And that's mm-hmm. totally great, and I get that. But it's like, Bo Cherry and Floyd and Adam have these other like basic dashing maneuvers that all vary. Like mm-hmm. uh, he does like a little step, like a like a boxer would step in, where she does like this kind of little leaping jump, and it's just just not giving anything to Blaze and Axel versus giving them something, but it's still being different is kind of, I'm like, why Why wouldn't you just do that instead of just not giving them a dash or a run? So you are right in that you can do a special move in the air, but, like, I don't... It's, it's not like, the same, yeah. It, it, it's such a minor thing because when you do get, like, you know, Streets of Rage 3 uh, Axel, he can dash all he wants, and, and Streets mm-hmm. of Rage 2 Axel to, to that effect as well. Um, but, like, I was just like, why, why would you just do that? Because it... For the start of the game, for like I like, I really like Axel and Blaze in terms of their design and their special moves and stuff, and I, I still played as them, but it just made me go, I just need something, just a little bit for momentum and not, you know, doing this. But like it, it again, it was it was a minor thing, and mm-hmm. the only other thing is that like aside from you, I did play like one two other times with people online. And I did it once on PS4 and once on Steam, and both times like the online was just not great. Yeah, it's, I have it's not really played not it since they did that patch, though. I don't know if that improved it at all. But you, you I haven't know, played but, online since before you that haven't? patch either. And it, it, okay. you're, before that patch, anyway, the online certainly was not ideal. It uh, wasn't terrible, <laughs> but it was like yeah. there were some problems with it. Yeah, it, it, look, if all you want to do is a casual playthrough with your friend, you'll have a great time. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, uh, but like maybe no money matches online. <laughs> I, I do <laughs> the really first, the versus the, the mode versus is so mode fun. Is really good, too. I, I so enjoy that a lot. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> yeah, totally. Anyway, I, I, um, I went on very long on this one, but Streets of Rage 4 is so, so excellent. And I, I do feel very strongly about... Uh, how I think the scoring system has real and meaningful and tangible problems, and I really do stand by that, but the game is so, so good otherwise. 
Uh, I can't wait to see what they're still working on for this game. I can't wait to see what they'll work on Estelle. next. And I actually am still playing this game to this day. I was yeah, I, I saw you. I saw week. you make a Max video not too long. Yeah. Ago. Oh, right. That's true. Yeah. I, no, it's good I stuff. play this game weekly. Like it's so 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 good. Um, yeah, but it will, I, I get it. it when it's like it's something you really really like, and there's just this one thing that kind of bothers you about it. But yeah. like it doesn't you know, yes. hurt your enjoyment and just playing it like, you know, a- any day. I, I, I wouldn't say I have like done multiple playthroughs like since, like I did a multiple playthroughs when it was out, but I did mess around. Like when I got my PS5, I, I, I installed that and messed around with it on PS5. I you know, <laughs> messed around on Switch and I also play, and I, I think I have it on, I don't have it on Xbox, but I have it on everything else. So, you know, that says a lot. Mm-hmm. So Definitely. that would that is your number seven. Yes. So go go ahead. Number six. So uh, <laughs> my number six is Hunt Down. Um, you played this a little bit on my Xbox uh, mm-hmm. when uh, a couple months back. Uh, you're just messing around, but um, I've since beaten it since then. And you know you'll you'll see a theme running through my top tens. It's like I really enjoyed games that weren't exactly new or did anything you know super crazy but were just too enjoyable and were nailing what they were doing to a t and hunt down really did that um at first i was gonna say it's like contra and i'm like no it's not really it's more like mutant Chron- like a really good version of mutant chronicles doom troopers on the Super Nintendo or Genesis, or uh, RoboCop versus Terminator on the Genesis. It's a specific, really grungy, side-scrolling shooter. And I, I think my main sort of thing is just audio and visual-wise, like, this is as polished and as amazing as you can get that. Because the pixel art on display here is, in terms of, like, you know, real traditional pixel art, like it's it's heads and shoulders above a lot of things I've played. It's audio mixing is perfect. And I know that's a weird thing to say about like a, you know, side scrolling 16 bit like looking thing, but like all of the sound effects, every single explosion, every single quip that your character says, enemies yelling at you, and it all it gets perfectly balanced where I can hear everything and like it was really good sound mixing when you when it's done you'll kind of notice it sometimes like I played triple a games where everything's all over the place um Mm. for some reason hunt down just really it was really engrossing that way and has a very synth synth soaked score that I love so much and like you know games like um far cry blood vengeance that that also did that, yeah, you know, futuristic 80s movie thing. But, you know, a little bit differently, you know, being placed in a Far Cry Island is a little bit different between this game, which goes hard for, like, a mix of the running man meets um, the warriors because you're clearing out all these gangs that each have a different gimmick, like they're wrestlers or hockey players or these people are super into bikes and guns and they're all very like a lot of attitude went into them especially bosses because each zone has like four sub levels and then a big boss and each one has a different like guy you take out at the end and each one like in contrast to say the pathless each one even though it's restricted to this side scrolling like 16 bit style every single one is completely different like there's a wrestler that that does a bunch of jumps off off ring posts and you're stuck mm-hmm. in a small arena. Then there's another one that's on a bike that's going backwards and forwards through the level and you have to like kind of jump over his bike. There's another one that's like a gigantic goalie on treads and each one is like just as fun as the last one. And that's kind of like my main thing. It's like, you know, bosses traditionally in a 16-bit game, there's – you know, only so many things you can do versus a 3D game. And in here, they just maximize it. And my only real thing, like, in terms of a a negative on it, is that once you do kind of beat this game, there's not a whole lot to bring you back. If you 100% 
every level because every level has like these three repeating uh, uh, repeating objectives like kill this amount of enemies, don't get killed once, and retrieve all the secret stashes that are hidden mm. in every level. Is it like challenge objectives, kind of. Yeah, it's th- those are the three that like you kind of get medals for. If mm. you do all of that, you unlock extra hard mode. Like fuck off. Like, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, but, I, for, for, I for get me, you there. For me personally, fuck off. Like medium was hard. Like yeah. it's it's not an easy game, and you do get checkpoints every so often and that helps out. But like I've had to fight bosses like a bunch of times, and that speaks a lot about the bosses. I never once got frustrated at a boss. It was. It was more like, okay, let me go again, let me go again. And each time, you know, I, I get further. And uh, aside from that, it was, you know, there's 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 three characters you can play as, but they don't play dramatically differently. They have these little differences. But, uh, you know, aside from, uh, okay, there's co-op, but there's no online. I would have loved to have, you know, been, been able to, to play this online with somebody, uh, especially during 2020, but it's co-op and I'm sure it's a blast in co-op. Um, I played this years and years ago at a PAX East and it just never showed up again until like, I want to say almost two years later, here it is. It's in stores now. And I was like, Holy shit. Okay. And just, it was, it was like that, that addictive type of, of, like even more so than Panzer Paladin, it was it was a little bit more polished. The levels had a lot more going on in terms of uh, unique obstacles to cross. It's just it was just really really fun. Like I, aside from those two things I mentioned, there's you know as we're getting down to our list, there's gonna be less and less negatives, obviously. But like yeah, just can't recommend Hunt Down enough. Hmm. The the one time I played it at your place, I was. I think I did the hockey level and I fought yep. that boss plenty of times and I very much echo what you were saying. It was it was never frustrating to lose. It was <laughs> it, it's a it's an extremely fair game, but it really doesn't pull its punches. Yeah, and it, it had all a, those it, it was a good time. It had all those neat uh, mobility options, not you're sure you can remember, but you can kind of dash. Yeah, I do and remember like that. Yeah. Dash in the air and even do like a death from a, from above, which doesn't change how like a 16 bit side scrolling shooter like plays that much, but it changes it just enough. Like it knocks people away, doesn't kill them, but gives you a mm-hmm. little breathing room. It's all these little little modern touches that that actually like heighten it rather than like overshadow it. So. Um, I think right now it's only on like the Epic Game Store and Switch. I don't remember if it's on PS4 or Xbox. No, it is on Xbox. It is on Xbox. That's what I Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, It was on Xbox. Uh, It's on, actually, it seems to be on everything right now. PS4, Switch, Xbox One. This is just off of uh, uh, the Google data, but. Uh. Okay. So, uh, yeah, like a lot of people kind of didn't. I did a video on it um, a few months back and. Some people are like, what is this? I've never heard of this. So um, I hope this kind of uh, spurs some people to check it out. But yeah, I really, really enjoyed Hunt Down. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So this will be your number six. Number six. So this one, so everything from here onwards was very hard to place. Mm. Uh, at certain points in time, every single game above this was my number one. Okay. So, so there is a power gap here. The only and again, the only reason Streets of Rage Four didn't make the power gap is that one thing that really stuck with me that I didn't like. But everything from here on out is, is so fucking good. Uh, number one competitor, all of them, even sixth place. And the only reason this one is at sixth place actually mm-hmm. uh, is because tragically I didn't have enough time to finish it. Okay. Um, so this one has been shuffled around a little bit. Uh, but I still wanted to put it in this upper echelon of titles, even though I didn't quite get through the whole thing. Because it's long as hell. It's 13 <laughs> Sentinels Aegis Rim, uh, Vanillaware's latest and Vanillaware's greatest ever game. Okay. Um, this is by far Vanillaware's best game. What the hell? It's so fucking good. <laughs> it's an adventure game through and through, right? Not quite point and click, but you know, you walk around and you talk with people. Uh, you use items on people, that that sort of thing. Uh, the narrative adventure portions are actually very straightforward. Uh, it's a lot less Monkey Island uh, and a lot more, I don't know, like Danganronpa or Ace Attorney. Um, even simpler than that, arguably. Uh, the, the big thing in this game 
uh, is there are 13 characters. As far as I know, there are 13 characters you play through, uh, you play with, um, and they each have uh, a series of chapters that you can view in just about whatever order you want. Mm-hmm. Um, there are bits where characters will get gated off, and it'll it'll say, okay, you gotta get this far with another character if you want to keep moving on with this character. Um, but it never feels like crazy restrictive. Uh, the most restrictive it feels, as far as, as I've seen so far, is the very beginning of the game, where you have you know you have very few characters and you sort of have to just go through them in whatever order they're doled out. But once once you sort of hit the the twenty percent mark in the narrative, you have an incredibly wide array of things you can do and characters you can um, character stories that you can follow. Uh, the The game early on sets up tons of mysteries with each of the characters Mm. uh and there are moments where you'll you'll select a certain character fully anticipating a certain uh a certain scene to be where you pick up and where you start and you'll end up being completely hoodwinked right out of the gates this character is not who you think they are this character is not where or when you thought they were uh it's surprising at all turns i really don't want to uh, reveal much of anything about the story because if, if this game interests you at all, I highly encourage you to uh, to nab it. Um, I'm the, the game tells me I'm about eighty percent of the way through the story portion of the game. Right. So I'm 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 getting there, but I haven't quite hit the end. Uh, and so far, it has been excellent. Uh, it has been extremely hard to put down when I do pick it up. Um, because Vanilla, VanillaWare has done to, this before. They kind of play with with timelines a little bit and swapping characters, and you know, not not to this extent certainly. Uh, but yeah, you know, they a, they, they a kind little, of do, uh, present their stories like that a lot of the time. Yeah, but like this time, it's interesting. <laughs> um, <laughs> it it I, I I like VanillaWare's work a lot. I think the only VanillaWare game that I'm not really big on is Kuma Tanchi for the DS that I. It's don't like even know that game. one. Yeah, well, don't worry. There's a reason why, right? Too much. <laughs> Very cute, but um, it, it, it's just so good. And I know, I know, a lot of people have come to expect combat in their vanillaware games, like traditional character based combat Mm -hmm. uh this game doesn't have that and i know for some people it's a bit of a turnoff but i i highly encourage you to look a little deeper uh and and maybe give it a go when it's on sale if you're if you're feeling it uh this game is a fucking master class uh aesthetically as well they're doing a lot of really cool stuff with 3d art uh that blends right into their 2d stuff and it's it's really remarkable to just walk through a scene and break down uh, which elements are using geometry in interesting ways and which elements aren't. Um, so uh, the, the other thing that uh, I need to mention is it does have a combat system. Uh, and the combat system, unfortunately, I, I, I've seen online, it's been a turnoff for some people. It's sort of a uh, top-down city view pseudo RTS kind of thing. Uh you have control of up to six of the 13 sentinels at once. Mm -hmm. Um, Enemies will try to approach your base and you need to stop them. Uh, The the sentinels can all be upgraded uh, and they all grow alongside the the character piloting them as the game carries on. Uh, The combat sequences all have their own narrative bits as well uh, that are... um, delivered and presented separately from the normal um, story bits. Uh, they're even separated in different menu options. The game has three huh. primary menus, and yeah, you shuffle between them as you want to access different content. Um, it sounds very unintuitive, but when it's actually in your hands, it's super snappy, and it's right, easy to right, get to yeah. exactly what you want to get to. Yeah, I didn't know about um, any of that stuff, so that's cool. Yeah, it, it's dude, it's, it's super interesting. Uh, it's simultaneously very traditional and uh, very inventive mm. uh the the character writing so far has all been uh very nice as well a little maybe a little tropey in the cases of some characters uh it is it is quite a wide cast some of them i think stick out uh more than others as being a little more interesting or a little more original but 
none of the characters in my experience are like boring uh, or anything like right, that. Right, right, right. Um, there are also a, a huge amount of um, interweaving narratives. So at certain points in the game, you'll kind of know, uh, oh, say these three characters, their stories are kind of wound together. But as the game carries on, their stories will kind of attach to other characters' stories, and you'll end up seeing how they all connect with each other. It's very interesting getting to see them all kind of uh, inter interweave with each other um, as you swap between the characters and as you mo- move forward and backwards uh, mm. over a very significant amount of time. Um, I, I can't recommend this game enough. It would probably be higher on my list if I had finished it. Uh, the only reason it's only at number six is some abstract feeling in my lizard brain that says, but Liam, you didn't finish it. You can't put it at number one. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, yeah that, that's fair. I think it's it's number six, yeah. So I think that's, like, nice middle of the road. It's number six, but, like, everything from six upwards may as well be number two or number one. Right, right, so, right. So, uh, I again, can't recommend this game enough. Uh, it's so fucking good. It looks amazing. It sounds amazing. It plays excellently. Uh, it's written well. Uh, the RTS combat is fun. It is good. It is not bad at all. Um, it, I can't recommend it enough. Good shit. Good uh, shit. It's, it's only on PS4, yeah? Yeah, at, uh, at time of recording, it's only on PS4. Okay, it's, yeah. Because um, um, I that, have always been meaning to try it, just never even got around to downloading it, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. I mean, one day. It'll be around forever. One day. Same yeah, with that uh, for a massive DLC you got to play. One day. All right, so... Uh-oh, looks like this recording goes a little long, and there's a short break between the two parts. Plus, the dreaded algorithm says multiple videos are better than one long four-hour one. The boys from above tier the top of their 2020 picks with numbers 5 through 1. Will they go for indie icons or AAA titans? Next time on Mumbling with Matt. Wrap this up like you'd want 2020 to be over. Obligatory Godzilla fan service reference.